Hey there, it's Brittany and I'm back with um, another tutorial using the, the butterfly mixes from Jesse James Beads. So I actually sorted my beads a little bit earlier um, and these are the beads that we're going to be using in um, our bracelet. And we have some um, check glass pearlized beads. We have some of the big uh, beads from the butterfly mix including these stone beads thought those were really nice nice purple periwinkle this adorable um, butterfly charm if you guys watched my live last weekend um, I used another butterfly charm on um, a necklace and this bracelet will actually match that necklace once we're finished um, some crystals and some spacers and some more crystal rondelles so we're gonna make a bracelet using these beads and it actually is going to be a style that I've made a couple times on my channel um, going back as far as a year ago I think and it's probably something that you've seen before but I, I love this style bracelet I wear it all the time we're gonna use a tiara cast button as a closure put that to the side for now and we're gonna use some leather cord USA um, orange leather I think the color was marigold this is two millimeter yep two millimeter round leather and we're going to use some soft flex beading wire. This is um, medium. Isn't that such a yummy color? The purple to go with our purple beads. Um, and then I am also going to use a ring from my leftover um, big girl chain. So there are three sizes in this big girl chain um, and I'm going to use this medium ring right here. So I'm going to cut that free. This will help us with our closure. And um, I'm gonna put the rest to the side. We don't need those now. So these are our um, materials for the bracelet that we're gonna make. And then we'll move on to more jewelry after we're finished with the bracelet. I'm gonna scooch in just a little bit so you can see a little bit better. So I just want to get my beads in the order that I'd like them to be for the bracelet. So I'm, I haven't really decided if I wanted to do like a pattern or if I wanted to do like um, an asymmetrical bracelet. I love doing asymmetrical bracelets, meaning, you know, they, the beads don't go really in a, a pattern, a planned out pattern. So we are going to hang our butterfly charm on the bracelet later. So I'm gonna set those to that to the side. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and get our beads sorted so we know what we have. So it's mostly purple. We have a couple yellow um, crackle glass beads. Okay. I think so. we are going to do a an asymmetrical bracelet. I really love how these gold um, beads are going to look leading up to our ring. Um, let's see here. Okay. So I think I'm just going to have the gold beads lead up to our ring i really like how that looks and then i really want to incorporate um, our pearls so i'm going to put a few pearls here and i really want to incorporate our stone beads so i think i'm going to do a little bit of this Okay, and then I think we're gonna insert a couple of our crystals. So let's see here. Put a crystal here. Move that over a little bit and Yeah. 
and then I think we'll go we'll do that again because we have two more of these guys let's see And then um, I'm going to put one more of those there. I'm going to put a gold crystal at the edge here. Actually, I'm going to put two gold crystals at the edge. And then another a purple crystal. And then that'll lead into our uh, button. So I'm going to, I'm going to start by stranding this. Um, we're going to start off with our button, although it doesn't really matter. Actually, I think I'm going to start off with this side of the, the, the bracelet because I definitely want to get all four of those beads in. So I'm going to take my soft flex. And I'm going to grab a crimp uh, crimp bead and crimp cover so these are from bead alone okay and I'm gonna put a crimp bead on our soft flex wire And I'm just gonna feed it through our loop. And if you'd like, you can definitely use a um, wire guard here. I'm just gonna use my crimp bead. Definitely wanna be able to see some of that purple. Isn't that cool? And we're going to leave some room so our ring can move around. I'm gonna grab my crimping pliers. And I want to make sure before I go any further that these wires are not crossed because that will lead to um, your crimp degrading over time and your neck, your bracelet breaking and we just don't want to deal with that, right? So we're going to put our crimp bead in the um, first valley of our crimping pliers. We want to make sure that it doesn't cross. And then we'll crimp. And then we're going to turn 90 degrees and go to the next valley. And then we're going to crimp. And then we'll just move up a couple more until we're uh, hitting it like that. And then we have a piece that's moving around. Now I am going to put on my crimp cover so we can't see it. If you don't have crimp covers, that's totally okay. You probably won't see the bead anyway. There we go. And then I am going to, normally I work on the spool, but um, at this point, since I started crimping before I put on my beads, we can't do that. I'm just gonna make sure that I have enough wire to make my full bracelet. So I'm gonna start by putting on my, my four gold beads. I'm not calling them spacers because we're actually using them as focals in this bracelet. I just love the color leading up to the ring and we'll slip this little guy in there you can cut that off if you'd like okay and then I'm just gonna keep going up the bracelet thing is um, Jesse James beads includes so many different beads that you can 
you know, really stretch them out to several projects. So that's what I really like. Um, you don't have to use beads from the entire collection in one, one piece, you can spread it out. So there's our bracelet so far, okay. And then I wanted to Gonna measure that to see how long it is and maybe an inch and a half two inches more because we're gonna need to put um, our bracelet on our, our button on and we're gonna have leather on this side too for the closure so um, depends it also depends on the size of your wrist too so I think what we'll end up doing is and I'm gonna trim off that tail later um, Oh, we got to put on another uh, purple bead. Totally missed that. And another one of these. Okay, so that completed our pattern there. I just love it. That purple with the gold is looking really nice. And I just love that peak of purple right there. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and do... I thought I was going to do two gold, then two purple, but I think I'm going to do a gold, purple, gold, purple. So I, th I think I'm going to go ahead and do per gold, purple, gold, instead of just doing two gold, two purple. And then I added some more of the purple and gold crystals um, just to make it a little bit longer. So I'm going to go gold. Actually, I'm going to start with purple because there are more purples and then there are gold. Okay, I'm gonna measure this on my wrist. Oh my gosh, I love it. I kind of love how it's just like purple, gold, oh yeah, purple and gold, then purples, then gold. Ugh, it's kind of color blocked too, I'm loving it. Okay, I took two crystals off because I think I needed it to be a little bit shorter. I'm gonna grab my tiara cast button. Love these. I'm gonna grab a uh, crimp, but or crimp bead. Um, put on my button. And then swing back through the crimp bead. And then I'm going to come back down through some of these beads to give me some leverage to close off the neck of the bracelet. Um, just a few. I can trim that later. Now, the next thing I want to do, and I say this in every video, I'm sure you've seen um, me say this. If you haven't, welcome. <laughs> um, Loosey goosey, right? We don't want this to be a straight line. It's not your your wrist isn't a straight line. It's not going to lay very well if you do it in a straight line. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and make sure. We're, um, oh, we want to get this guy into some of the beads because that's creating a gap at the other end. Okay. And then we'll pull a little bit more. We want it to be pretty tight while it's loosey goosey. I, I know you, once you start making bracelets a little bit more often, you'll understand what I'm saying if you if you aren't already making them often. But um, we want to make sure there's there aren't any extra gaps between our beads. And then we'll go ahead and crimp here. Now, if you need to, it's a totally okay to do a flat crimp since there's a little bit of a room issue between your beads and your crimp bead. Um, 
it's too tight in there it's sometimes too hard to 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 do the folded crimp i'm going to try to the best of my ability without cracking the bead next to it which i've done more than once <laughs> um, and then we'll go ahead and flip and i want to get it into one of the notches if i can there we go 90 degrees press and then you'll press here to make sure that it's done and then we'll grab another bead cover crimp bead cover close that around it and we're good to go I'm gonna go ahead and snip my wires Make sure you only snip the extra tail, not the extra, not the real wire. And I think the other one's inside these beads, so we're okay. Now, this is not a finished bracelet. There is a ring on here, but this this is too big. This ring is too big for that button to fall go through. You would never be able to give it on your wrist, right? So I'm sure you're probably like, Brittany, what the heck are you doing? Um, that's where the leather comes in. Now, for this part, I'm gonna use a barrel knot tube. It's just a, a metal tube bead. You can use a straw. Um, there are other beads that you can use, like noodle beads, whatever you want. I'm just gonna cut a piece of leather. I always cut too much on purpose because I never want to um, not have enough. So here, this is what a barrel knot tube looks like. It's just a metal noodle bead. One that can, I think it's probably three millimeter, one that can fit your, um, your leather through. Now I'm sure you're like, Brittany, why are you choosing orange to go with purple? Well, it's my new color combo. I don't know if you watched the video from last weekend, but orange and purple looked so good on that brace or on the necklace that I made. Um, and then uh, Jesse James Beads has orange and purple in these wing earrings that I'm going to show you, or wings that I'm going to show you how we're going to make into earrings next. I just love orange and purple together right now. They're total opposites and you would never think to put them together, but they're just working out for me this year. Um, okay, so I'm gonna cut some leather off. Again, I'm probably gonna cut way too much. You can be conservative if you're really good at making barrel knots. Some days I am, some days I am not. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and loop my uh, leather around my ring, okay? Now we're gonna have a short end and a long end. And I wanna make sure that the long end is much longer than our shorter end, okay? The short end I'm gonna keep, short tail I'm gonna keep at the top. I'm gonna to grab my um, barrel knot tube and I'm gonna put it between my two pieces of leather, okay? We're gonna take the bottom and we're gonna come up over both the, the barrel knot tube and the top of our leather. Okay, we're gonna hold that in place and then we're gonna come to the left of that loop. We're gonna make another one, okay? And then we're gonna do it one more time. And just hold those in place with your finger. Now I'm gonna come around, all the way around, and then I am going to come back through my barrel knot tube. Okay, and you can see it coming out the other end. Hold on to your knot. Then we're gonna slowly slip out the barrel knot tube and we're gonna pull on the longer end of our leather. And we're gonna slowly pull our knot down to our ring. And this is how we're gonna get it to stay on our bracelet. So that's what a barrel knot looks like. It's got these three loops and you can do barrel knots two loops three loops four five loops if you want but um, i'm just going to do three and then we're just going to work it to, to get it to be um, so it stops moving so you can do that by pulling these uh, ends here and we want to make sure there's enough room for it to move around our bracelet so we might want to move it out a little bit now this at this point we want to grab some e, um, either E6000 I don't really like using E6000 on leather I typically use um, GS Hypo cement so before I um, make my second barrel knot I'm gonna come in here there's a precision tip on GS Hypo cement mine is a hot mess she's on her last legs here so we're gonna slip our um, precision tip uh, around the knot because we will end up cutting this later so we want to make sure that um, 
the uh, leather doesn't unravel later. So we're just gonna kind of guide that glue around the knot. Okay, and of course it'll dry clear. You wanna put your uh, cap right back on, otherwise you're gonna have a big sticky mess like I normally do with my glue. Okay, so we'll leave that for now. Actually, we're not gonna be cutting that end now that I'm thinking about it, but we still wanna glue it. Um, and then we're gonna do the exact same thing on the, uh, in about probably an inch, not even, for us to complete our closure, okay? So we wanna make sure that we're measuring around our button so our button can slip through, but it doesn't slip out easily, okay? So we want it to be about right there let it go now that's something we can change a little bit once we start doing our barrel knot again we want the shorter end up at the top slip in our barrel knot tube and then we're gonna go around once right we're gonna go around again and again and then we're gonna bring it to the front See, there's a big gap there. We'll fix it. Don't worry. Push our end of our leather through. Grab our tube, slip that out, and then we're going to pull that. So we want our knot to be up a little bit more than that. Okay. We want to make sure that our button will slip through correctly. Hold your knot so it doesn't come undone because we haven't tightened it yet. And that's perfect. Here we go. I can actually move it up just a little bit more. I want to tighten it. I'm going to pull this strand to tighten the knot. Here we go. We want to make sure you can come back out. <laughs> oh, we'll have to tighten it a little bit more because it's coming undone there. There we go. Okay, so our knot is finished here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my hypo cement, GS hypo cement, and we still have a little bit of glob from the last knot. Um, I'll probably wipe a little bit of that off, but we wanna get it in there, and we wanna let that set so it doesn't um, come undone. There we go. I'm probably being a little heavy handed with the glue, but better safe than sorry, right? So while that is setting, I'm gonna let it just do its thing. Here is our little butterfly. Okay, and I'm gonna grab a jump ring. I like this little, I don't know if that'll go around. I think it will. Grab my um, pliers, op twist open our jump ring, and we will get our little butterfly on our adorable little bracelet. So cute <gasps> it's so cute it makes me so happy okay so I'm gonna let this dry to the side and we'll finish that off in just a minute next oh no we got some glue on our table next we're gonna make some matching earrings um, if you guys missed my uh, live on Jesse James beads the other day I made matching earrings that day too we're gonna use um, a couple different things here so I picked out some more um, beads these are using two different mixes the live your dream mix and um, I think it was called sisters by heart maybe um, yeah I think it was called sisters by heart so these are two mixes together and you also get a bunch of really cute um, 
uh, charms, one that says not sisters by blood, but sisters by heart. And then I think one that says live your dream. So um, these were some of the items that I pulled out of those two mixes. Don't these hearts just look super sweet, super cute. I love, love, love them. Okay. And yes, this, I guess it's not going to really match because this one's gold, but, and we're using some silver, but um, I also wanted to use some of these stars. And then I just loved these little hearts. I love hearts so much. So um, we have those and then I also have these wings. Okay. So um, the other day I used some cha chain reaction and um, the crystals from the chain reaction to create a link here to hang from the earring and then some chain hanging behind it. Today, I'm gonna le grab these, leave these in the back of the earring. Actually, I'm gonna do turn one the other way and um, I'm going to get a larger ring and we're just going to have some charms hanging in front of the um, butterflies. What I also need are some head pins and I actually have these really cute ball head pins from Beetleon. And um, I'm definitely gonna use these purple cr uh, cube crystals. Just love those so much. I don't really, they're not really cubes because they're rectangles, but I don't really know the name <laughs> for them. And you can absolutely wire wrap these. Um, actually, I think, you know what? The, the end is, the head pin's long enough for me too. I think I'm going to wire wrap these. I'm gonna find some smaller, thinner um, pliers here. These aren't the best pliers, but they're thinner than the ones that I had. And I'm just gonna do some messy wraps, some messy little wraps on these. These are a really good gauge for um, wire wrapping. And we'll be using a ring so we don't need to wire wrap it on first, or at least attach it first. Okay, and if you'd like, you can definitely use your, your pliers to do this part. I'm just gonna cut off the excess wire as close as I can. And if I need to, I can just tuck that in. I think it'll be okay. And I'm gonna do that with these little hearts. Just love them. Aren't those the sweetest little bead? I, I have a, a, an infatuation with hearts, that's for sure. Just think they're such a sweet little shape. These are great really like these okay so um, then by these I mean the the head pins okay we'll trim that off and I'm gonna put a little tiny purple crystal and then one of these spacer beads and then another tiny purple crystal okay wire wrap that so I bring that to the back Regrip, bring it to the front. Bring that down here. And there we go. Lovely. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for um, the other earring and I'll be right back. Okay, so I went in a slightly different direction. Instead of using these two, I made um, two extra of these cubes. And instead of making this a dingle, I'm gonna cut this apart and we're going to make it a link. I'm just gonna grab one of these head pins. And if you, if you have eye pins, 
in this color that's great um, and I'm just gonna make two loops so we'll go ahead and do that okay And swing that around just once to get it locked in there. Okay, and we'll trim off the little tail. And then we'll push down our heart and we can kind of tuck that little end in a little bit. Here we go. Push down our little heart. And uh, I want this guy to be kind of facing forward so I can straight, straighten that out in a little bit. And um, I'm gonna wire wrap the top. It's definitely a little messy wrap. Um, you can push this down with your fingers or your pliers to get it to be a little more cohesive. Here we go. And I'm just gonna trim that too. See if I can get it to bend a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And then I am ready to assemble my earring. So I grabbed a, um, a uh, larger jump ring out of my um, kit here and a smaller jump ring. And the first thing I'm gonna do is to grab this smaller jump ring, twist it open, and grab my other pliers. And I'm gonna grab my heart slide it on there and find the front of my wing and we're gonna go ahead and put the heart on the front of the wing there so it, it looks like that so cute and then I'm gonna grab my bigger jump ring open it up and I'm gonna put my wing on here okay. make sure actually we don't want to close it yet I closed it prematurely um, we're gonna slip it around there that's what I meant to do is just flip it around so we could see the heart Grab that, let that swing. Then we're gonna take one of our rectangles, put it on the right side, and we're gonna take our second rectangle. He's hiding, oh, there it is. We're gonna put our second rectangle on the left side. So our wing looks like that. And then we're gonna take our heart, and we wanna twist our heart a little bit. So I'm gonna just lay this down want to twist our heart so the loop is facing front way front to back like that okay and then I'm gonna take my wing and slip the heart on close that back up okay and then we're gonna take the heart again just the cutest sweetest little thing and we want to make sure that this loop is facing front like that and I'm gonna grab my earring wire open that up and slip our heart right onto the earring wire close that up and there is our earring Oh my gosh I just love those hearts on there sorry I'll make it so you can see them a little bit more easily here's our second earring aren't those just the sweetest little things and they 
can, I mean, if you don't mind mis mixing metals, which I look really good with this bracelet that we're about to finish off. So I'll go back to the bracelet. I'm just gonna clear these out of the way in the middle of our screen here. I got glue all over my mat. <laughs> it happens. And then um, I'm just gonna grab my snips. Okay, and then we're gonna trim our leather. You can trim it up here, but I like to leave a little bit. Now, if I had thinner leather, I probably would put um, a bead on the end of here. And if you have larger um, like crimp covers, uh, you could crimp that around your, your leather. That would be really cool. I'm just gonna leave a little bit of a tail um, on both pieces. So here is our finished bracelet. Isn't this amazing? It's so cheerful. There we go. Oh my gosh, it's so adorable. Um, I will back out and show you pictures of what they both look like together. Okay, so here are our earrings. Let's lay those out. Oh my gosh, it's so cute, so sweet. And then if you like the sound of beads, you're gonna hear that a little bit um, next to your ear all day as you move. Kind of remind you that you're wearing wings on your ears. I just love those little hearts and that we got, we're able to get two pairs of hearts and one pair of earrings, or two hearts and one pair of earrings was awesome to me. And then actually I was just thinking that this bracelet would be a great stacker for that Arizona sunset bra bracelet that I made. Um, a few weeks ago. Now, I just love the little extra touches on here, like the barrel knot. You could just use an overhand knot if you'd like. I'm gonna scoo scooch in just a little bit. Um, you could use um, an overhand knot if you like. They're certainly a lot easier, um, but I just love the barrel look. I love that we incorporated the orange with the purple, and even just looking that closely at our bracelet, you see a little pop of purple right there with the soft flex. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you don't know, I have a channel on YouTube called um, Turquoise Street and I have a bead group on a Facebook called Brittany's Beads. I would love to see you there. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you to Jesse James Beads for having me back and I hope you have a good weekend. Bye-bye.